Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Butterman. Today I'll be talking about how to use the next generation Verbin drill stops to perform keyless implant surgery with a CEREC Guide 2. The original Verbin drill stops worked very, very well with CEREC Guide 2. The only downside with these drill stops is that they mainly are used to control the angulation, mesiobuccal distolingual position of the implant, but there really isn't any sort of a vertical stop on these drill stops. So the drill stop is designed to fit onto the drill and makes contact with the hub of the handpiece. And in order to control your vertical, it's actually the handpiece that's bottoming out on your guide. So it's certainly workable, but your D2 basically is always a fixed number from the tip of your drill all the way up to the hub of your implant. So the next generation Verbin drill stops that are going to be coming out, they're designed currently to be used with the Densa Burkett. And this is a universal drill system, and really you can use it to place any sort of an implant. The premise behind these drills is that if you run them forward, you're, running, you're basically doing a cutting motion like a traditional drill. If you run them in reverse, then you're densifying or basically compacting and expanding the bone. And uh, that really gives you really high primary torque values. Um, and it can take type 3 or type 4 bone and potentially increase it to 1 or 2 bone. The system is really designed to be used with any sort of implant system. The, all the major brands are listed under here. There's nothing, there's nothing about this implant drill that, uh, that tells you you have to use a specific implant, but if you find one on their list, then you can click on it and it'll give you the step-by-step -step instructions as far as which burr, what order to use it in, which burrs you actually need for that particular implant and that particular size. So the new version of the drill stops look a little bit different. You can see that it sits on the drill, it rests on it, and it's able to slip up and down the drill until it bangs into some silicone stops that you place on the drill. That becomes your vertical stop instead of the hub of the handpiece. There's also a lip on the end of the drill stop which will engage the new guide. So once the drill stop slips up the drill, you can see that it makes contact with those silicone stops. So the uh, drill stop fits passively. This one is made for a medium sized CEREC guide hole. The drill stop sits passively within the guide and once you insert it, you'll keep pressing down until the lip of the uh, drill stop again makes contact with the silicone. And once that does, that is your D2, that controls your vertical. So the way you calculate the D2 on this system is slightly different. And quite simply, the D2 is just the entire length, the tip of the drill to some predefined stop, such as the top of your guide. In this case, we've got to take a couple things into account to create the D2. And really, the way I like to plan it is for the smallest D2 possible so that uh, the patient doesn't need to open as wide and we can use shorter drills. So in order to calculate it, we would basically have our length of our implant, and then we need to calculate off of the scan the platform distance to the gingival crest so that we can basically not have the drill stop interfere or make premature contact with the gingiva. And then we need to add on top of it the entire length of the drill stop. So in this scenario, if we had an eight millimeter implant and then we had two millimeters from the platform of the implant to the crest of the gingiva, and then we have a 10 millimeter length approximately for the drill stop, then we'd have a D2 of approximately 20 millimeters. You can always add a millimeter or two onto it to increase your D2 length if you're not entirely sure of how tall that space is, what the entire distance is from the, uh, again, from the crest of the gingiva down to the implant platform. So again, we can kind of see visually, once the drill stop engages the silicone stops, from that point to the tip of your drill is your, dr your D2 length. The, uh, one of the nice features about using a drill stop instead of a key system is that the CEREC Guide 2 gives you an option to cut a slot in your guide and in patients that can't open very wide it's sort of nice at least on the smaller drills where you can 
insert the drill laterally first and uh, um, it just saves you a little room and the patient uh, can normally tolerate this better. So there's nothing wrong with using a typical key system. The uh, only downside is that you need a guided surgical kit for every implant brand you're placing and you need to buy Serona keys uh, that fit in the Seric Guide 2 for every specific implant and that can get quite costly. With the new drill stops, basically you use the Densaw drills for every single type of implant and then really only one drill stop with different silicone rings for uh, setting different D2 values. Uh, in this case where I use this drill stop, the patient already had already placed an implant in position three and we we're placing one in site number four. The guide is tried on and verified. And we can see that really once the Densaw drill is placed in, the uh, entire length is created, the entire vertical is controlled by the lip of the drill stop hitting my guide. Um, again, I have total control of that D2 value by putting smaller or larger silicone rings on. Here we can actually see that the drill stop is making contact with the tissue. It probably would have been better if I would have added an extra millimeter or two onto my D2 so that there'd be a little more space between the gingiva. I was still able to, to drill to full length here um, and we end up with a very predictable implant placement. Thank you very much.